Hi everyone, welcome here. My name is Oshina. I am going to be sharing kind of some reflections of my time reading the New Testament. Um, I think I announced in some video a couple weeks ago that I wanted to read the whole New Testament in the message version by the end of the year. And I don't know if I'll end up doing that because um, I'm still in the Gospels, but I thought I would share like some of the things that I've been learning and just some encouragement. And I haven't really done a video like this in a little while. and. I just kind of was like, you know, I miss it. And I think what like really inspired me to share though is I have also been reading This Present Darkness by Frank Peretti um, and I'm buddy reading it with Lindsay. So I've been loving doing that. And it is just, oh, it's speaking to me so much about prayer and then also really knowing God's word. Yeah, I'm just even more inspired to like really know what is in this book. And I know this is the message version. This is like a, what do you call it? I know there's a word. Um, anyways, this is not a direct translation of like the original Greek or anything. Um, this is definitely in modern English and with a lot more description. I've been getting a lot out of it and yeah, so I thought I would share. So I started with Matthew and you guys. I haven't read, I don't know. Well, I mean, I've never read the whole New Testament in the message before. So yeah, there's like things standing out that I'm like, this is, I love the wording of it. So I will link all of these verses down below. They are in the message, so they're quite long, so I won't write them all out. But so in chapter three of Matthew, we're in John the Baptist's point of view right now. Um, and he is actually talking to the Pharisees and he's like getting upset at them because he calls them a brood of snakes and just that their faith isn't deep. So he's talking about baptism as well. So verses 11 to 12 say, I'm baptizing you in the river, turning your old life in for a kingdom life. The real action comes next. The main character in this drama, compared to him, I'm a mere stagehand, will ignite the kingdom life within you, a fire within you, the Holy Spirit within you, changing you from the inside out. He's going to clean house, make a clean sweep of your lives. He'll place everything true in its proper place before God. Everything false he'll put out with the trash to be burned. So isn't that like an interesting wording of this passage? But what really stood out, I feel like this, a part of this could be just a prayer that we pray for ourselves because it says like the main character, aka Jesus, will ignite the kingdom life within you, a fire within you, the Holy Spirit within you, changing you from the inside out. And I feel like this is like something that we could pray over ourselves and and I did. Um, I prayed with my sister about this one and it just was very inspiring to like really commit my life to Jesus and commit like everything that I'm doing for him. I, I really liked that. I liked the wording a lot. I also really liked um, Matthew chapter six when Jesus is teaching the disciples how to pray. It's just so beautiful. So like, this is the Lord's Prayer, but it's in the message version. So, and it's verses seven to 13. So it's quite a, a collection, but um, I'm just reading like, I'm not reading the full seven. This is your father you're dealing with and he knows better than what you, eh. Heck. this is your father you are dealing with and he knows better than you what you need. With a God like this loving you, you can pray very simply like this. Our Father in heaven, reveal who you are, set the world right, do what's best, as above, so below. Keep us alive with three square meals, keep us forgiven with you and forgiving others. Keep us safe from other, our, <laughs> keep us safe from ourselves and the devil. You're in charge, you can do anything you want. You're a blaze in beauty. Yes, yes, yes. So great, I love that. Like really at the beginning with a God like this loving you, you can pray very simply like oh, that's so beautiful and then i love the beginning like our father in heaven reveal who you are so good set the world right do what's best so love that okay so at the very end of chapter six um kind of verses 30 to 34 um it's the passage where jesus talks about like if god cares about the flowers of the field and the birds of the air, like how much more does he care about you? Then at the very end of kind of like 33 and 34, steep your life in God reality, God initiative and God provisions. Don't worry about missing out. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. 
Give your ent entire attention to what God is doing right now and don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Like, just straight up, like, life lesson right there. Like, give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. Don't get worked up about things that may or may not happen. Like, that's anxiety right there, you know? God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. So good. Like, I, I feel like that's true, you know? Like, I, I do think that this is what God wants us to know. And so these are truths that I'm, like, trying to, like, root into my heart so that I don't struggle with anxiety so much. <laughs> and it's, like, a process. But, like, you know, reading this is so encouraging. Okay, but then the real the real thing here. Um, chapter 8. Yeah, chapter 8. Verses 23 to 27. So... It is the story of when Jesus is in the boat with all the disciples and there's a storm and the disciples are like, oh yeah, because Jesus is sleeping and the disciples are like, how can you be sleeping? Like, save us, we're going to drown. So I, before I read this, so like this was the next section I was on in my life at the time. Um, I was reading this in October and there was like a thing going on that I was like, oh, I don't know if I can ask god about this because like does does this qualify is this even something i want to ask like like and i'm being vague but like yeah basically do i want to ask god for this thing that i want so there you go and then i read this so i'm gonna read the whole thing because it's so good so 23 to 27 then he got in the boat his disciples with him the next thing they knew, they were in a severe storm. Waves were crashing into the boat and he was sound asleep. They roused him pleading, Master, save us, we're going down. Jesus reprimanded them. Why are you such cowards, such faint hearts? Then he stood up and told the wind to be silent, the sea to quiet da down. Silence. The sea became smooth as glass. The men rubbed their eyes astonished. What's going on here? Wind and sea come to heal at his command. The second I read this, I felt like a full message from God and he was just like don't be like these disciples yes you can ask me you can ask me for anything I literally control the weather I control nature I am all-powerful I can do anything so you can ask me for anything and I was like okay message message received it was it was crazy and it and I'm not saying that like he was saying, ask him for anything and he'll give it to you. Like, that wasn't the message that I got. It wasn't that he's saying, like, yeah, I'll give you whatever you ask for. It was more so, like, you can ask. There's not things that are, like, off limits, okay? And so I was like, okay, great to know. So that, like, triggered a whole conversation with God about the things. And, yeah. Talking a little bit about, like, relationships, romance, the things trying to figure things out here um you know i'm turning 30 soon i'm still single and it's hard so i've had to pray a lot and this really helped because yeah i just felt like god was saying like you can ask me for anything it's okay so i was like okay <laughs> okay another like similar thing to the the storm one where so jesus is walking on water and Peter's like, oh, tell me to come to you if you're really Jesus. And so he's like, okay. So that, that's what this scene is. So yeah, all the disciples are like, a ghost, they said, cry out, crying out in terror. But Jesus was quick to comfort them. Courage, it's me. Don't be afraid. Oh, sorry, by the way. Um, this is Matthew 14, verses 27 to 31. Courage, it's me. Don't be afraid. Peter, suddenly bold, said, Master, if it's really you, call me to come to you on the water. He said, come ahead. Jumping out of the boat, Peter walked on the water to Jesus. But when he looked down at the waves churning beneath his feet, he lost his nerve and started to sink. He cried, Master, save me. Jesus didn't hesitate. He reached down and grabbed his hand. Then he said, faint heart, what got into you? That little scene too, I just feel like God was saying like, you, you can step out of the boat and you don't have to sink. Like, keep your eyes on me. You can do anything with me. You can do the impossible with me. And... A little bit too like don't be like Peter like don't take your eyes off Jesus it was like encouraging but 
also just like a reminder like if I start sinking I can call it to Jesus and he's right there but I also don't have to start sinking <laughs> like I can well I, I yeah I don't know I hope you guys know what I'm trying to say <laughs> and if you don't well that's my fault okay Oh yeah, this was interesting. Okay, Matthew 23, um, at the very beginning, verses 1 to 3. Jesus turned to address his disciples along with the crowd that had gathered with them. The religion, scholars, and Pharisees are competent teachers in God's law. You won't go wrong in following their teachings on Moses, but be careful about following them. They talk a good line, but they don't live it. They don't take it into their hearts and live it out in their behavior. It's all spit and polished veneer. But I thought that was interesting because, like, I think that speaks to how there can be people that we follow on social media or even in our real life that have a lot of wisdom that um just seem to know a lot of things and you actually can learn from them but making them like your source of truth is where things go wrong because they can't they're they're imperfect like they're not meant to be followed like that it's just sure they can have some good teachings so I think it's just calling us to be discerning and and then don't like get kind of obsessed with people and like following them and stuff. So yeah. Oh yeah, because then later on in verse 8, don't let people do that to you. Put you on a pedestal like that. You all have a single teacher and you are all classmates. Don't set people up as experts over your life, letting them tell you what to do. Save that authority for God. Let him tell you what to do. No one else should carry the title of father. You have only one father and he's in heaven. Like Jesus is just like laying it out. Like you don't let someone else like think that you're so great and whatever. Like we're all just here trying to figure things out. And I think it's okay to be inspired by people and encouraged by people. And like, that's literally what I'm trying to do right now. I think it maybe when it turns to like obsession or even just like, like having someone that like okay everything they do is right if I do everything they do I'll be right too it's it's not like that because we all make mistakes and like we're all gonna do things we regret and whatever so like following a person just isn't gonna work in the long run but obviously following God will so um yeah I think good reminder both ways like don't idolize people and then also don't like try to be idolized by like being so cool and whatever um I don't know Okay, so into Mark now. Um, so Mark chapter 4, end of chapter 4, it's verses 35 to, th uh, to 41. Um, so this is another like retelling of when the disciples are in a storm and Jesus is sleeping in the boat. Um, so it was all like very similar to how the Matthew passage, passage was. But then like when I read it, I was still like having those thoughts, I guess. And so it was just another reminder, like, I just felt like the Holy Spirit was like, remember this, like, keep reading and, you know, trust me, you can ask me for anything. So I liked that a lot. Okay, and then nearing the end here, um, so I'm on chapter 13, technically right now, um, but I, I want to share something about chapter 11. So Mark chapter 11, verses 22 to 25. So this is related to when Jesus... Um, cursed the fig tree and because it wasn't producing fruit and so whatever and then the disciples were like oh hey like it's dead now and so then um, Jesus was a matter of fact embrace this God life really embrace it and nothing will be too much for you this mountain for instance just say go jump in the lake no shuffling or shilly shallying <laughs> and it's as good as done that's why I urge you to pray for absolutely everything ranging from small to large Include everything as you embrace this God life and you'll get God's everything. And when you assume the posture of prayer, remember that it's not all asking. If you have anything against someone, forgive. Only then will your heavenly father be inclined to also wipe your slate clean of sins. So when I read this, once again, when it says, I urge you to pray for absolutely everything ranging from small to large. Again, I just felt like God revealed to me like, hey, you can ask me for anything ask me for everything, like pray about everything pretty much. And I liked that a lot. But then I also liked the very end. If you have, or wait, when you assume the posture of prayer, remember it's not all asking. If you have anything against someone, forgive. 
so just a, a good reminder again that like holding grudges you know being upset easily when you live with people it happens a lot and it's just like god the god life that it's talking about here means forgiving over and over again and loving over and over again and it is really hard but that is the work of being a follower of jesus and it's worth it yeah that was very encouraging for me and i liked it yeah um i think that's it i highly recommend this book highly recommend this book and that is all that i wanted to share i don't know i just like I felt like switching it up, so thank you so much for watching, you guys. I'll write all of the verses down below that I mentioned, and I'll try to find this book online, this book, this Bible, because um, I got this, like, at a physical bookstore, so I don't even know, like, it's published by Nav Press, I guess, um, so I'll try to, like, find it on Amazon, but I don't know, like, I think that this is beautiful, like, also look at all the designs, so nice, but... I don't know how I could like share it with you guys, but I will try. And I guess I encourage you to read the New Testament. <laughs> um, I'm still going strong. I'm in the middle of Mark. Uh, well, close to the end now. And yeah, then I'm just going to keep on going to Luke and keep going until I finish it. So I may check in in a couple weeks when I've read some more and keep sharing because why not? You know, I want to use this channel for this kind of thing as well. And it's been a while, so it feels good to do this. And I love you guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.